What's up, members of the Barrio? It's John coming to you from Parque Mexico in Mexico City, and this is my favorite country on earth to visit. But if it's your first time here, you may run into some common issues and mistakes, and believe me, I've been there myself. So to help you out, I'm gonna be sharing the 10 most common tourist mistakes to avoid in Mexico. Guys, tell me down below in the comments if I missed anything, I'm curious. Here we go. The first common tourist mistake we're gonna begin with is something you're gonna run into when you land at an airport in Mexico, and that deals with the entry card. Now, you're gonna to have to fill that out if you're a foreigner on the airplane, but one big mistake people make is they forget to fill out the bottom part of the card. It actually happened to me my first trip to Mexico. They're gonna send you back, you're gonna to have to fill it out, you're gonna lose 15 or 20 minutes. That's problem number one. Number two is an even bigger issue. You need to keep that entry card in a safe place I recommend putting it in your passport. If you lose your entry card, when you exit Mexico at the airport, they're gonna fine you about 40 US dollars. You're gonna have to go to a separate line. You're gonna lose a lot of time. So trust me, do not lose that entry card. This next one isn't necessarily a mistake, but it's something I want to point out as a tourist, and that's the politeness and courtesy, specifically of the culture in Mexico. And one great example of this is if you're in any situation, you know, you always wanna say gracias, but you'll hear people saying muchas gracias, mil gracias, adding that to your vocabulary is gonna make you look like such a polite tourist, and it's gonna go a long way. Another really good idea, and you're not gonna see this necessarily at a resort in Cancun, but leaving any restaurant in most cities in Mexico, if you turn to everyone in the restaurant as you leave and say, provecho, it's like saying, have a nice meal. It's one of those nice little customs that if you did it as a foreigner, I think you would impress so many people. Now, if you're not brave enough to try that, I understand, but be on the lookout for that at restaurants in Mexico. Being extra polite in every situation is going to go a really long way. Not even learning a little bit of token Spanish. Now, you don't need anywhere near fluency in Spanish to visit Mexico. In fact, if you're visiting Cancun, you probably don't need more than gracias. But if you wanna take your trip to the next level, I'm gonna tell you, I think you need to study just a little bit of Spanish. And whatever that means for you, if it means getting a private tutor via Skype, I love that method. If it means using an app like Duolingo, or better yet, I've got a great tip for you. My two friends, Jim and Mai, run a YouTube channel called Spanish and go and they combine travel vlogs around Latin America with learning vocabulary learning pronunciation it's a really interesting YouTube channel if you want to level up your Spanish I highly recommend you check these two out you're not gonna regret it but I will say that if you go into any restaurant in Mexico even if you barely speak saying something like no hablo mucho espanol and just trying a little bit will be so good for you and I think the locals are really going to appreciate just a little bit of token effort Wait, what the? One of the locals, see? not experimenting enough with food. This is a very common mistake, especially first timers make to Mexico who are afraid of getting Montezuma's revenge from eating the wrong thing. I will say that Mexico has some of the richest cuisine I have ever had in my entire life, traveling to more than 30 different countries, from mole to tacos to Yucatecan cuisine. I could go on and on about the amazing things that you should try when you come to Mexico, but I wanna give you a couple of tips about food, and one of them involves street food. If you're just walking in any city or town and you see a crowded street stall, that is an excellent sign that locals like to go to this place. And if they're going to the spot and they keep returning, odds are they're not getting food poisoning from it and they definitely are enjoying the food. Another tip I'm gonna give you, and this is very true, never trust the Mexican's opinion on if the salsa is spicy or not because their tolerance to spice might be a little bit different than yours. And believe me, I've been burned on that a couple of times. And here's a little tip about using salsa in any restaurant or street stall. Adriana, my wife, told me about this. She's Mexican. Pour a little bit of salsa on your plate before putting it on your taco. Dip your finger in it and taste it. Then you're gonna know how spicy that salsa is. 
the next issue we're gonna go into is about exchanging money. A lot of first time visitors to Mexico think their best bet is either to exchange dollars to pesos in the US somewhere or to do it at the airport when they arrive where I will tell you you're gonna get one of the worst rates possible. My advice on this is to try to have a bank account that prevents you from having foreign transaction fees at outside ATM machines. For example, I know Charles Schwab has an account like that. I personally have a TD Bank Premier account where I can use my debit card anywhere in the world and no matter what the fees are at the ATM machine, I know I'm still gonna get a pretty good rate and I'm not gonna lose any extra money in the exchange process. Now, if you're going somewhere like Cancun and you're just going to a resort, you probably won't even need pesos, you can just use dollars, but I'll tell you, outside of those types of areas, dollars are not going to cut it and you are going to need local currency. Let's talk about tipping. Now there are certain countries and areas of the world where tipping pretty much doesn't exist. Let's say Southeast Asia, but in Mexico, it's not quite like the United States, but if you go to a restaurant and you have good service, you really should be tipping about 10% of the entire bill. If you go to a bar and you order from a bartender, generally speaking, you're not gonna have to tip, but if he's making you good cocktails, it would definitely be something that would be generous of you. If you go to a bar, however, and you're sitting at a table and you have a waitress bringing you drinks, then you should tip 10% as well. As far as taxi drivers are concerned, it's not expected to tip them. So the tipping culture in Mexico isn't quite like other spots, of the world, but it's definitely not as high as the United States. One of the most common fears that tourists have when they come to Mexico is the water. Now there's a lot of different things to discuss about water in Mexico. The first is tap water, and yes, you probably heard it, you do not want to drink the tap water, but you can use tap water, obviously, to shower. You can rinse with it, if you're brushing your teeth, you can wash dishes with it. What Mexicans will do is they will buy these five liter jugs in their house to use uh, for a lot of their cooking and other things. You're probably not gonna run into that unless you're at an Airbnb, but just buy bottled water on the street if you're gonna do something like that on the go. The other issue is ice. There seems to be this common belief that you cannot drink ice in Latin America. Now in Mexico, most places you go to are gonna give you treated ice, it's purified, and it's gonna have a little hole in it. I actually saw I kid you not, in an airport lounge once in Mexico, there was a tourist who said to the bartender, no ice please. He kind of said it in a rude way, and I saw the bartender rolling his eyes at him because he realized, we're in an airport lounge, we're not giving you bad ice, the ice had a hole in it, it was clearly purified. So in most situations, wherever you go, if you order ice, you should not have a problem, but if in doubt, look for that little hole in the ice to make sure that it is purified. We're gonna be talking about transportation, Uber versus taking public transport in Mexico. I would say if your Spanish is limited and you're going on a short trip to Mexico, just using Uber would be by far the easiest way to get around. Now you will need a SIM card or Wi-Fi. We're gonna to get to SIM cards in just a little bit, but I'll give you an example. Traveling about 25 minutes from Mexico City's airport to Condesa costs about $5. The Uber prices here compared to the United States, it is unbelievably cheap compared to those prices. So I highly recommend Uber, but if you're gonna be in Mexico for a longer period of time, I encourage you to try to learn the public transport system, especially if you're improving your Spanish a bit. In Mexico City, for example, it costs just 25 cents for a subway swipe. I warn you, it can be crowded, and there are known pickpockets on the subway, so if it's a really crowded train, be on the lookout for that. SIM cards, always an issue no matter where you travel, anywhere in the world. Now, Mexico being so close to the United States, a lot of companies, let's say Verizon, for example, can give you a deal where it'll be something like $5 a day to use your phone in Mexico with data and calls and texts included. But if you're in Mexico for a month, do you really wanna spend $150 on your Verizon plan? Another option with something like Verizon, which I have, is you get 500 megabytes a day included if you have a 4G plan with unlimited data in the US. That's what I'm using right now for three and a half weeks in Mexico. But if you want the best service possible, I say get a SIM card on arrival at the airport. Something like Telcel would cost you just $20 per month for unlimited calls, unlimited texts, a good amount of data, something like five to 10 gigabytes. You can always up it if you have to. So I think if you want the absolute best service on phones in Mexico, get a SIM card on arrival. 
I think one of the biggest mistakes you could make as a tourist in Mexico is only traveling to all-inclusive resorts, only going to Cancun, only going to Puerto Vallarta. You're gonna have the same experience as everybody else. I think you need to expand your horizons a little bit. I'm in Mexico City right now, a cosmopolitan place with a population of almost nine million. I mean, look behind me, this looks European. This is one of the most exciting cities on earth for food, for nightlife, for culture. But if you're not into big cities, Mexico has 121 Pueblo Magicos, and the name is exactly what it sounds like, magical towns that are very small, or another good suggestion is Guanajuato, a little bit bigger of a city with some amazing colonial charm, but wherever you're looking for in Mexico, you can find it. Beaches, jungles, mountains, explore, trust me, you won't regret it. Guys, tell me down below in the comments if I missed any mistakes that maybe you ran into on any trip to Mexico. I'm curious, let's get a discussion going, and make sure to watch our other Mexico videos, all linked down below in the description, for even more ideas of things to do on your next trip south of the border. Guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, until next time.